November 2003, Colonel Tillman prepared to fly the president into the heart of the Iraq war to share Thanksgiving with American troops. To prevent an insurgent attack on the president, no one except those on board could know his destination in advance. This mission, the president wanted to be completely secret. I think probably in the end, there was probably maybe five of us that had a really good idea of what was gonna happen. Even air traffic control had to be kept in the dark. If any hint of the mission slipped out, the operation would be scrubbed. How do I execute a non-stop covert mission uh, without alerting anybody of what we were doing? How do you make the president disappear for a few days? The president, the most closely watched man on earth, needed to vanish for 48 hours. To establish a cover story, the trip started at his ranch in Texas. The first family had gathered for Thanksgiving, but the president would not be there for dinner. Very few people in Crawford at the ranch knew that I'd be leaving. It was very much a cloak and dagger operation. Passenger one boarded secretly in Waco, Texas, but the jet couldn't fly nonstop to Iraq without refueling. To keep the trip as swift and secret as possible, the president's plane touched down outside Washington at Andrews and pulled into the hangar. Inside, the second presidential plane was standing by, fueled up for immediate departure. We did everything inside the hangar because we had to worry about the tower watching us or anybody outside. You know, everyone's blood pressure was up. It was very interesting, the, you know, the kind of the choreography inside the hangar when we left. Uh, and the president gets off, he's got his polo shirt on, he's got a baseball cap on. Um, he walks off one airplane, walks on another airplane. Everyone, all the maintenance guys, recognized it was the president as well as our cops inside. They all knew, oh my God, it's the president. They knew at that point something was going on. Minutes after arrival, the president was headed back into the air. But as far as the rest of the world knew, the presidential plane never took off. When we left here, we used a different call sign, so we weren't Air Force One. We filed a flight plan for a Gulfstream type of aircraft, okay? So I changed the identity of our airplane. Uh, we changed the modes, the codes, and everything associated with the movement of an airplane. So once it got airborne, all the, the center would see is that there's an airplane. They didn't know it was a 747. Six hours out, all systems go. A bogus Gulfstream jet heads east. But in the skies over England, a chance encounter almost blows the plane's cover. We were going over London, England, and uh, uh, another pilot had gone by and seen the airplane and asked if it was Air Force One, and the controller dutifully said, no, sir, it's a Gulfstream-type aircraft. Well, to say that we all missed the heartbeat is an understatement, because all we needed was that civilian pilot to say, sir, that's not a Gulfstream aircraft, that's a 747, it's blue and white, it sure looks like Air Force One. That could have been a reason to terminate the operation.